This is the Star News Brief. I'm Mark Gitau. President William Bruto and Opposition Chief Raila Odinga have tabled dramatically divergent agendas for talks whose real intent could be to checkmate each other, the Star can report. Both teams have expanded their agendas from mere reconstitution of the IBC to cover many contentious issues that could potentially end in a stalemate. One of the seven issues lined up for discussion by the Ruto team is ways of controlling street protests. As Mio, on the other hand, wants to tie down the government to discuss auditing last year's presidential election results and ending interference with political parties. Get a copy of The Star by subscribing to our e-paper with only 40 shillings through www.mgazeti.com. Ex-President Uhuru Kenyatta's fate as the leader of the troubled Jubilee Party now lies with the Registrar of Political Parties and Deritu. It has now emerged. The Star has established that a splinter faction led by Ayala Member of Parliament Kanini Kiega has officially notified the Registrar of Uhuru's removal in the wake of the deepening wrangles in the outfit. If the Registrar endorses the removal process, Uhuru will cease being party leader in what could be a humbling end for a man who ruled Kenya for 10 years. Joey Irungu, the main suspect in the Monica Kimani murder, on Thursday narrated how he ended up with a gunshot wound on the fateful day. He explained to the court how an argument ensued between him and his ex fiance Jackie Maribe over some message he saw on her phone. Joey said it was not the first time they were having such an argument. Joey subsequently took his clothes and in the heat of things he said a gun which belonged to Brian went off. The controversial Malindi-based preacher Paul McKenzie, his wife Rhoda Mawiu and 16 co-accused other persons are demanding bedding, good food and water in the police cells. According to McKenzie, they have been forced to sleep on cold floors, therefore risking contracting diseases like pneumonia. The suspects who are being held in connection with deaths of over 130 persons that allegedly starved to death in the infamous Shakahola forest will continue staying behind bars for one month. A would-be border border rider on his first job was dragged from a Likoni mosque by a mob which beat him to death. The motive has not been established and the family of Hamid Mohamed Banhe is demanding answers. The case is very strange. Was their son a criminal? What really happened to Hamid? Get a copy of the staff for a comprehensive story on the incident. Get a copy of the Star by subscribing to our e-paper with only 40 shillings through www.mgazeti.com.